I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is a smoke stopper. And if you don't know what a smoke stopper is, today you're going to learn why you absolutely need to have one of these in your toolkit. And I'm going to show you how to make one. And if you're one of those people out there who says, you don't need a smoke stopper, all you need is a multimeter and just test for continuity. People who use smoke stoppers are dumb. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. You need a smoke stopper. Stay tuned. Before we talk about what a smoke stopper is and how to make a smoke stopper and why you need a smoke stopper, let's just talk about what a smoke stopper does. And as its name suggests, it stops you from smoking your quad. So let's imagine that this right here, this is our quadcopter, right? It is invisible. We have an invisible quadcopter. Let's imagine that somewhere in that quadcopter, you have a short circuit because you blobbed some solder where it shouldn't have been or just however you did it, you've got a short circuit. And that means that when you plug in your battery, too much current is going to flow and the smoke is going to come out. But when you have a smoke stopper, when you plug in your battery and there's a short circuit on your quadcopter, no smoke comes out. And the reason for that is that that light bulb, it's a resistive load and it is preventing excess current flow from happening. Where's the excess current going? It's going into making light. In fact, this particular light bulb, this is about a 25 watt uh, light bulb and on 4S voltage, well, we can actually, we don't have to speculate. We can just use my good old clamp meter here. Let's just see how much current flows when we plug this guy in. About three amps, about three amps will flow. And that's good because three, I'm blinded by, <laughs> blinded by the light. And that's good because three amps is not enough current to blow out a trace on your ESC or smoke one of your motors if your ESC is damaged or something like that. Three amps is a safe amount of current for most of the stuff on your quadcopter. And that's why a smoke stopper is useful. If you have a defect in your quadcopter that will cause excess current to flow like a short circuit, then a smoke stopper will prevent that from happening. A smoke stopper also gives a really nice visual indicator that you have a fault because when you plug in the quad and nothing's wrong, the light bulb doesn't light up. When the light bulb lights up, you know you have a problem. Now this here is another device that some people use as a smoke stopper and it does almost the same thing, but it does it using a solid state component called a polyfuse. And the way a polyfuse works is that when current flows, the polyfuse heats up and then the polyfuse trips like a fuse and prevents current from flowing. Let's see that, let's watch that in action. So here the battery is plugged in and the light is lit indicating that everything is fine. And I'm going to short this and I just want to see what happens to the current when it shorts. Oh. Okay. That's not what was supposed to happen. <laughs> I swear to God, I did, I've used this, but the <laughs> Get that goes in the trash. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it failed open or is it failed closed? <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> did it fail open or fail closed? Oh my god, what did it do? <laughs> okay, let's see what happened here. Oh, oh. Ah, 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 it's crackling. <laughs> it lit up. <laughs> I'm not going to plug it in again. But <laughs> what's the what's the voltage on the output terminals? <laughs> I have to know. I have to know. I have to know the voltage. <laughs> and what I want to know is if it, obviously it failed. <laughs> the smoke stopper smoked. But did it fail open or fail close? Do we have voltage here? Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> we have 15 volts! <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> this is a, oh my god, this has gone totally off the rails. <laughs> okay, so, 
This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> whenever the smoke comes out, you know you got a good video. <laughs> okay, guys, <clears throat> get, let's get, let's get. Mm -hmm. The way this thing is supposed to work is that when excess current flows, the polyfuse trips and shuts off current flow. And this is nice because this guy is much smaller and more durable than a light bulb. But there's a reason I don't like these. And one of them is that they're not as reliable <laughs> as the light bulb. The other is that they take longer, <laughs> but seriously, they take longer to trip. So these can take up to like a half a second to trip, and that can be enough time to smoke something. There are lots of stories of people who smoked something on this guy who wouldn't have smoked something if they'd been using a light bulb. So this will protect against the worst case scenarios, but it, there, there are other scenarios that it doesn't protect against. The final reason I don't like these as much is that when they fail, as we saw there, they fail. I mean, it's not protecting anymore, but it's still outputting voltage and it appears to be working. It lights up and everything. Whereas a light bulb, when it fails, it fails open. It feels uh, not short, but open and no more current can flow. So there's just no way to be wrong about whether a light bulb is or isn't protecting you. These are okay. So these go up to 6S. That's nice. Theoretically, they're just not as good at protecting and they're just not as reliable. But there is one more thing that these solid state guys don't do that light bulbs do. And that's why this argument about multimeters is wrong. So what a lot of people say is, if you've got a multimeter, put the multimeter into continuity mode and then test your gosh darn XT60 to see if you have a short. And then you don't have a short and you're fine. And then you can plug in your battery safely and everything is good. They say if you know how to use your multimeter, you don't need one of these. But you're wrong. And here's why. The first reason you're wrong is that not every short circuit will appear when you test that way. Let's say I am doing something with my quadcopter and the quadcopter is plugged in. I don't know why I'm just take go with me. At any moment, I could accidentally short circuit something with my screwdriver and create a short circuit <laughs> where I didn't mean to. Now, I would probably not ever do that on a quadcopter I was working on on the bench, but sometimes I've got some stuff laid out on the bench and I've got, got my battery plugged in and I'm working on whatever, like say I'm just trying to test something out on the bench so I've got my alligator clips and I've got my battery and I'm doing whatever and ah ah they touched well if I by by plugging the smoke stopper in line it makes it safe for me to just screw around with nonsense like this on the bench I would never do that just with a bare XT60 another thing that can cause short circuits is like the wrong firmware on an ESC or a damaged motor so you may test for continuity at the XT60 and not have any continuity, but the minute you go to spin the motors, whoop, suddenly something smokes. A continuity test with your multimeter will never be able to protect you from that situation, but a smoke stopper can. There's one more reason why a smoke stopper is awesome, and it, it, it's this. Smoke stopper. Do, do, do. Plugging in. Plugging in on the bench with my props on. Oh, plugging in on the bench with my props on. This'll probably go just fine. And now I'm gonna arm my quadcopter. This'll probably go just fine. V-Fly Finder V2, it's freaking loud. What happened there is that as the current being pulled through the light bulb increased, the voltage on the other side of the light bulb decreased. That light bulb is not gonna let more than about three amps through itself, period. Which means that if you wanna work on your quad on the bench and you don't wanna take your props off for some reason, just for a minute, you can plug your smoke stopper in and it prevents the motors from pulling enough current to actually hurt you. So that's something that you can't do with a multimeter.
Now in just a minute, I'm gonna show you how to make a smoke stopper for yourself, but I wanna give you a couple heads up on the proper use and interpretation of a smoke stopper. A smoke stopper will light up when a certain amount of current flows through it. In this case, with a 4S battery on a tw this light bulb, it was about three amps. Now, usually that will only happen when there is a fault in the quadcopter causing a short circuit. But some people use a smoke stopper and they say, and then I armed the quad and I spun the motors and the whole thing shut down. Well, as that last demonstration showed, the reason that's happening is that the motors are pulling current and the voltage is dropping, the smoke stopper is doing its job. If you need to test your motors, at more than just like the minimum of an idle, you can't do it with the smoke stopper in line. As you saw, my quadcopter motors were able to start and spin and begin to kind of spin up, but some quad, some motors won't even spin. As soon as you try to arm them, the light bulb will light and the, the whole quad will shut down. The other thing is that depending on the wattage of the bulb you choose, you the amount of current that it can take before it lights up will be different. This is a 25 watt two element bulb and as you saw, we got about three amps through it. If you choose a lower wattage bulb, then less current will flow through it. And if you choose a bulb that is too low of a wattage, simply plugging the quadcopter in, the current pulled by the VTX and the camera and the receiver, even when the motors aren't spinning, could light the bulb. So if you're working with something like tiny whoops, you might want to use a little like five or 10 watt bulb. If you're working with five inch quads, a 25 watt bulb like this is just fine. In fact, this is a two element bulb and some people will use the low beam element uh, for their, they'll put an XT30 on it for their tiny whoops and the high beam element for their, for their larger quads. We're just gonna make a very simple one like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna install this bulb in series on the positive lead of the XT60. And in order to do that, we're gonna need to figure out how these individual pins sort of join up with each other. And we're gonna do that using the continuity check mode of the multimeter. So now the multimeter's in continuity check. And we just wanna see how these pins are connected to each other. Are they connected like this? Does this one connect to this one? No. Okay. Okay, what about this one to this one? Maybe they go that, no. How about here? Ah, okay. So this one on this side connects to this one on that side, and that's like the high beam. And then this one on this side connects diagonally to that one on that side, and that's like the low beam, I guess. I'm gonna take this, and I'm just gonna snip right here. You can actually buy a socket for these if you prefer to. Yeah, it just pulls right out. It doesn't even need to be cut, honestly. You can buy a socket. It makes them easier to change if you, if you break one, but in my experience, these things are pretty durable, and I, I've only had to rebuild mine like one time in all the time that I've had it. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. We're just gonna twist these guys together like so. And then we're gonna take some wire, and this is 14 gauge wire. You don't actually need to use very thick wire because because of the light bulb, there should only ever be like three or four amps flowing through it at a time, depending on your battery voltage. But um, I'm just gonna take this. And here is the almost final smoke stopper. So you can see that after twisting the little wires together that go to the light bulb, I've soldered the battery wire to it so that the light bulb is in series. The ground wire just goes from one side to the other. The only thing that's missing here is that I'm actually out. I'm completely out of this type of XT60 connector. I've just, I haven't got a single one. So I couldn't quite finish it, but you can hopefully picture what's all going on here and making this, and then I'll just need to put that on. The other thing I like to do is these little these little wires here are not, they're kind of easy to break off. So um, what I like to do is this. Grab a big old hunk of heat shrink, put it up here. Just at the top. Good. I'm gonna start to shrink it just at the top. And then I'm going to this is one of the only things I use hot glue for anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna glob in some hot glue. And 
I'm going to start shrinking this. With the hot glue glued in it. fingers here. The hot glue stays hot for a while. There's two kinds of people. People with hot glue guns and people with fingerprints. <laughs> and there you almost go. There's your smoke stopper. One thing to keep in mind is these are automotive light bulbs and so they're nominally rated for 12 volts. Um, Automobiles have pretty noisy electricity, and in fact, when the alternator is running and the battery's charging, the voltage may be 13.5 or even 14 volts. So these guys, I've run this on 4S forever, and this is like my second one. So you can run these on up to 4S, no problem. On 5S or 6S, you're going to want to watch out. Number one, the voltage might be high enough that the bulb will just pop. And number two, the higher the voltage, the more current will flow. So on 4S, you've got about three amps flowing. On 6S, you're going to have more amps flowing, and that may be enough to damage something. I would say if you're going to go on 5S or 6S, build two of these and put them in series with each other and that will double the resistance and have the amount of current flowing. Also, if you are trying to build, like if you if you wanna build one with an XT30 for like a, 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 a tiny whoop or something, use a lower wattage bulb. These are 25 watt bulbs, link in the video description to the exact bulb I'm using. If you use a lower wattage bulb, it'll allow less current to pass. This bulb will let a, a tiny whoop fry. Three amps is enough to fry some of the smaller traces on those. So there you go. Now you know why you should have a smoke stopper in your toolkit. Number one, because it keeps things from burning. Yes, you can test for continuity with a multimeter, but not every fault will result in continuity. And you don't, you don't always have a multimeter. When you're out in the field or you're working or something, just plug one of these guys in. It's a little bit easier. Number two, because this guy limits current flow and therefore you can safely work on a quad with props on and without risking that's going to eat your face. So another good thing to have a smoke stopper. And number three, because if you ever just want to plug in a battery and just use some alligator clips or something on the bench, you know, then this, you could do it safely without worrying about short circuiting the battery and blowing something up. Some of you guys out there say that's all well and good, but I have a current limited power supply. And I can just say, limit the current to 500 milliamps. Okay, you don't need a smoke stopper, you're good. But try putting that current limited power supply in your backpack and taking it to the field with you, uh, or on a trip, you're not going to, that's a smoke stopper. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I hope you, uh, I hope you make a smoke stopper. And uh, if you did feel like you learned something, can I remind you, this is my full-time job and uh, I love making videos that help you enjoy the hobby more. And if you love watching them and you feel like supporting me, one of the ways you can do that is by becoming one of my patrons, link down in the video description to my Patreon, Patreon page, however you say it. And the other way you can do that is by using my affiliate links. Um, on most of the videos that have products in them, there'll be links down in the video description. And if you click one of those links and then make any purchase at that at that vendor. This is gonna be an Amazon link. So you just click there, click that link, go do your Amazon shopping, buy whatever. I get a small commission, it really does help. Thank you so much. Happy flying everybody.